Next, we're going to work on the guitars. So we'll go to our groups or our buses. We'll turn on the guitars and we'll turn off the vocal for now. Everything else can stay on because we adjusted those already. So the first guitar I want to work on is this main guitar right here. Make it bigger. Now, if you remember, this is the main rhythm guitar. It's a little more jangly on the heavy guitars, but it's playing the same part. But it's the main rhythm guitar for the song. So let's hear what it sounds like in the track. Now let's hear that in solo. Now the first thing I notice is it's very compressed. So we don't need any more compression, but it's a little dark, it's a little muddy. So it could use a little EQ. Now the EQ I've been using for the guitars lately is this one over here called TubeTech. It's an emulation of the TubeTech EQ, which again is an emulation of the Pultec, and it's made by SoftTube. So the first thing I want to do with this is play with the low end. It's a little muddy, and I don't want it to interfere with the bass. We want the bass to deal with the low end and the guitars to work a little bit higher. So any unnecessary low end information is unnecessary. So I'm going to filter it out if it's not important. So let's hear it again. Now that's a little too much. Let's find the happy medium. Right about there feels pretty good. Gets rid of some of that extra low end, making room for the bass. So let's add some top end now. We'll find the frequency that works the best. Those are a bit too high. Those are a bit too low. Four K seems to be the sweet spot. It's not too high and peaky, and it's not too mid rangey. So let's see how much boost we need. About there feels pretty good, but let's hear it with the track. Now that feels pretty good. Let's hear it against the vocal. We want to make sure the high end matches with the vocal. We don't want this to sound too dull against the vocal. That's a little dark. And we don't want it to be too bright either. doesn't work well with the vocal. So let's play around with it to find the sweet spot to work with the vocal. Now another thing to note that I like to do is to work with the volume and the EQ at the same time. So let me turn off the vocal for now. And as I play with this EQ, I'm going to work with the level also. Because you can easily trick yourself into liking more boost simply because it's louder. That's why I like to adjust the volume at the same time, to make sure it's actually better, not just louder. Because when you turn the boost down, you need to turn the guitar volume up to hear it at the same level. Then when you make it brighter,
you can lower the guitar because it's cutting through more. But you may like it darker, but louder. Or you might like it brighter and a little lower, a little more peaky. Again, you want to check it against the vocal. Using volume and EQ at the same time. I prefer it 5 dB. It cuts a little more, and I can keep it lower in the mix, which is going to help when I add all the other guitars in the song as they fight against each other. Having them a little more peaky will give a little more clarity to them, and they can stay lower in the mix. Now, if you notice right now, the guitar is still fighting with the vocal. They're kind of in the same space. We all know it's so to make some more room for the vocal or the guitar, I'm going to pan the guitar over a little bit. That should make it a little bit louder and a little clearer as it gets out of the way of the vocal. So now we should hear the vocal a little better and the guitar a little better. So you can see how important panning can be in the mix. So we'll be adjusting that a bunch. And we may want to retweak the EQ after we change the panning. I think I like it better this way, though. We know it's party motion, sure. we know all this. Notice how muddy that sounds in bypass. We all know it's Doesn't work with the vocal. It's too far out of the way. And it works quite nicely with the other things. Listen to the top end of the snare against this guitar. We all know it's party they all seem to match or work well with each other. They kind of fit. You don't want the snare sounding dark and the guitar sounding bright, or vice versa. So let's close this and make this smaller. And that guitar is done for now. Now again, as we start bringing the other guitars in, we're probably going to come back in here and tweak this even more. And of course, the volume and pan. But for now, this sounds pretty good. So that's the main guitar, or the main rhythm guitar. Next, we're going to work on the high guitar. So let's go. 